my buddy was almost sexually assaulted by a chick and then he fell through our toilet. <laughs> You're in a fraternity, you get a little brother. My little was wild, wild. One of the funniest human beings I've ever met in my life, but just hilarious. He was he was that kid who he would have an out of control week, and then he'd come back and be like, "Man, I really need to get my shit together," and then go do the same shit every weekend. So he's just like me, and I loved it. He cracked me up. One of the first two weekends of school starting up, he's a sophomore, I'm a senior. He had just found out that he, when he drinks liquor, it's like an allergic reaction, and his face gets all red, and he swells up. So he's like, yeah, I probably shouldn't drink liquor tonight. I'm like, yeah, you're probably smart, considering you have like your face gets all red and stuff. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And then proceeds to smash a bottle of Fireball. He had a fifth of Fireball, then he was drinking Don Julio, Jose Cuervo, every time I looked, and then he drank a bottle of Crown. So by like 9.30, this kid is so trash, he can't even walk. Like he's <laughs> Every time I'd see him with another body, I'd be like, hey, man, you should probably stop doing that. Like I'm trying to be somewhat like responsible for him. So I'm like, hey, man, you should probably put that away. He's like, fuck you, Tom. I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, go ahead, keep drinking. <laughs> by 9.30, he had, he had pissed himself during the party, he can't even talk. He's hanging off our front porch just completely incoherent. And it's it was hysterical because we were like, dude, you went from like, ah, I'm not drinking liquor tonight to drinking bottles of it. Now you're out, passed out on the porch. And he had been telling us that this chick was trying, had been trying to hook up with him for like two or three weeks. And he wasn't, he was not, he was like borderline down, but he wasn't sure if he wanted to do it or whatever. Because she was, I want to say she was a year older than me. She was a senior or a fifth year senior. Throughout the night, I'm just kind of throwing water on him and checking on him, make sure he's still coherent during the party. And then I went inside because we needed more mixed drinks. So I go inside to fill up our mixed drink. And when we come back out, he's missing. He's off the porch, gone. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, like, where is he? Because he can't talk. He literally could not speak. He couldn't speak words at this point. We were like checking his pupils and stuff. We thought we were going to have to take him to the hospital to get his stomach pumped. Like, that's how drunk my man was. So, I'm looking for him, and my girlfriend at the time's like, have, has, has anyone seen so-and-so? And I'm like, has anyone seen my little? Like, he is he is not in condition to be walking around Bowling Green by himself. Like, we need to find this kid. And someone's like, oh, yeah, I saw him walk off the porch with so-and-so. Well, I hear the name, and I'm like, oh, my God, the chick that wanted to hook up with him. So, I'm go running off our porch at our party house, and I'm running down Enterprise Street like, I got to find this kid. I got to find this kid. So I'm looking to the right, looking to the left, and I'm trying to figure out which way he could have gone. Well, I see it's so obvious it's him because I see this chick literally walking, and his legs aren't even working. This chick's got his arm over her shoulder, just guiding him down the sidewalk. And I'm like, he's a dead body at this point. Holy shit. So I go sprinting over there, and I'm like, hey, you cannot take him home. And she's like, but I want to take him home. I'm like, no, that ain't happening tonight. Like, what are you going to even do with him? Like, he's already pissed himself. I remember my girlfriend screaming at her, like, what the hell's wrong with you? That's taking advantage of him. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing when I heard that because I'm like, oh, my gosh. And we get him back, and he could barely speak, but I remember him saying, he's like, thank you, thank you. We're like, yeah, dude, we got you. But that's the, it's so funny because, like, the stereotype is, especially at frat parties, like, girls are getting drugged and taken advantage of and all that. We're like, dude. There's a lot of guys that definitely get into the same situations, but they probably wake up the next day and guys are just different. They're like, I don't remember it, but this is on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because as a guy, you roll over and go, oh, it was a rough night. Or you go, oh, decent. I remember it, but okay. <laughs> like That's just how guys are. It's just a different way of approaching those type of things. But it was pretty ironic that one of our fraternity members was almost taken advantage of by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest part of the night is that all happened before like 10 o'clock so when we get him back to the house party we had to put him on a couch in our garage in the back because we're like we can't put him in one of the rooms because he's puking and he's pissed himself but if we put him out there then we can check on him every couple minutes we were feeding him water for about two hours during the party and once the party shuts down everyone leaves someone said hey he parked his truck in this church parking lot he's gonna get towed so i'm like oh shit i go move his truck while I put the truck back. <laughs> I'm out there with two of my other buddies, and we hear a bunch of movement in the garage, and we thought he was asleep, so we're like, oh, shit. So we go in, and he's staggering around, knocking all of our furniture in the garage over, 
fallen into shit, knocked over like six trash cans. And he's a huge dude. He's like 6'5", probably 240, 250. Like, he's not a small man. And we're all like built like me, smaller guys. So we're trying to be like, hey, 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 you, you got to lay down. You gotta lay. He's like, can I go in the house? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we'll get you in the house. We'll get you in the house. So, I mean, talk about, I've never seen a human being this annihilated like his legs were not even working like spaghetti noodles so we got me and another kid like two pretty small guys trying to carry this man into the house it took us like 15 minutes to get him from the garage to the back back door which is only like a 10 foot walk we finally get him into the house and we lay him on this old futon mattress because we're like dude we don't want him laying on everything because he's pissing all over the house well when we get him inside he says he's got to use the restroom so he stands up, we get him over to our bathroom, and you're like, you know, you don't want to see that business, and, and he don't want you to see it. So you try to let him use the restroom on his own, and we just hear, boom, and my buddy comes, my roommate at the time, comes running around the corner, he's like, dude, he just fell through the toilet. So we go running in, there's water spraying everywhere. He fell and hit the toilet so hard that he knocked it off the screwed-in mounts. So there's water spraying everywhere. We're turning the, we're trying to turn the water off the toilet. He's crawling around laughing. We're like, get up, get up, get up. So we drag him out there. He ended up pissing in one of our huge trash cans the rest of the night. And then the next day, we were just had our life to talk about, dude, you gotta get your drinking together. Like, we're all for you having a good time, but you couldn't even function last night. He's like, Yeah, it was my bad, it was my bad. And everybody has those nights, so like nobody was really that mad at it. It was more so just like, hey dude, like just for your own sake, so you can function on the weekend. Maybe you shouldn't drink that much liquor anymore. <laughs> for me, that that story was just iconic because because he was literally almost taken over by a girl that he did not want to go home with, and then we ended up taking care of her the rest of the night. That there's more to that story, but I have to wait till he comes on to share the rest of that story with you guys because one of the funniest nights of my college career, and it was opening weekend. The funniest part about it is. Opening weekend, you, know, you usually think of all the freshmen that can't drink with the lanyards around their neck and all that type of shit. Our alumni were just a shit show. Like, we had guys, all of our alumni were puking off the porch, <laughs> couldn't walk. We had my little dude, his whole charade. So, like, all of our fraternity members who brought their own drinks to the party were absolutely blitzed and <laughs> just, like, freshman year drunk while the freshmen... As far as I remember, all the freshmen there were functioning fine. So it was just ironic and very, very funny, very uh, entertaining opening weekend for us senior year of college. So, so yeah, that's today's episode. Hope everyone's well. We'll be back with more stories soon. Talk to Tom. Yeah,